Hello and welcome back to another video from Hill and Valley. If you're like us and you make a lot of videos, you'll know that one of the most popular types of videos to make involve filming interviews. And filming interviews can be great, but there's so many different variables, especially when you go into filming on location, that you have to be prepared and make sure you have the right things to solve any problem that may arise. So today we're going to be talking about some of the equipment that we tend to bring or always bring with us when we're filming interviews on location. So tomorrow we have a shoot, we're filming an interview on location at somebody's house that we've never been to before. So we're going to show you all the things that we would typically bring in an ideal situation to film an interview. So the first thing we'd like to talk about and probably the most obvious is how we get the gear there. This is our Crane AMG 750, it's our camera cart. Um, and we like to bring this whenever we can. The biggest limitation is if there's going to be enough room at the location. Um, if there's not enough room for our cart, we will bring our Think Tank Studio Manager 50, which is almost as good, but it doesn't hold quite as much and it's harder to maneuver for us because it doesn't have wheels on all sides, it just has wheels on the back. Um, where with a cart, we can easily move this from room to room or location to location and not have to worry about putting too much strain on ourselves. It also serves as a great home base, a place where we could build cameras and kind of set things up so we have our own space on location and we don't have to worry about damaging anyone else's property. So the next thing we're going to talk about is our camera setups that we'll bring with us. So our main camera is our Sony FX9. This will typically have on a tripod with a lens similar to this. This is our 35 millimeter 1.4. It's not always a prime lens for our main camera, but most often we like to be around 35 millimeters for our main angle. The FX9 is a great camera for interviews because it has lots of interface for both audio and video. It has two XLRs on board, so if we're ever filming an interview and we can't bring an audio recorder, we can record audio straight to that via our wireless labs or shotgun microphone. It also has both SDI and HDMI out. So not only could we send the signal to a monitor for ourselves to view, but if we're working with a director or producer, we can also send it out to a separate device or monitor for them to view. So how that typically would work is we reserve the HDMI for our onboard monitor. So not only do we have this status monitor here where we can see all the information, it's usually too small for us to judge a final image off of. So we'll attach something like our Atomos Shinobi, which is a five inch uh, HD monitor so that um, both the camera operator and camera assistant can see the image and then the SDI out is typically for our video transmitter which would send the signal to something like our director's monitor and then we also have a second SDI out so if we ever need to have another monitor available we can. Another thing we really love about having the FX9 and a reason why it is our main camera is it also has built-in ND filters um, usually when you're filming on location, we have no idea what the ambient exposure is going to look like and being able to use the ND filters to balance it with our key light just gives us even more flexibility. And we'll usually use it in a configuration like the one you see here where we have our tilt to matte box which we can use to insert filters such as mist filters. Again, you don't need ND in the matte box because it has it built in. And then we also have our small rig shoulder pad attached to it right now. Um, we'll usually use this just in case we're going to need to get any sort of b-roll or if we just want to get like a handheld sort of shot, we can quickly and easily do that thanks to the VCT adapter on the shoulder pad. We can very quickly and easily go from being on a tripod to being handheld. And then we also have this V-mount back here where we can attach V-mount batteries, which makes this great for filming all day. Usually when we're filming interviews, it takes quite a long time. so. It's awesome that we can not only have power for the whole day, but this can also power multiple devices like if we have an additional monitor on board. So that does it for our main camera. Our B camera varies a little bit more, but tomorrow we'll be using it on a tripod most likely. So this is our Sony a7S III. We actually have two of these. Um, this one usually lives in the cage, and this is the one we'll typically take if we're going to be on a tripod or handheld. Um, and then our other one we have that we'll often use where is it? In conjunction with our gimbal, our Ronin RS2. Um, and that depends on the environment again. Tomorrow, the interview we're filming is going to be a little bit more static. 
so we know that we're going to want to use a tripod where sometimes if we're filming more of like a run and gun interview or something a little more planned out we'll have the second camera on the RS2 with an operator. So for tomorrow we have our Sony a7S III with our 24-70 2.8 and this makes a great B camera. We're typically a little bit on the longer end of the lens. We usually shoot our secondary angle a little bit more profile and around 70 millimeters but it does vary depending on the environment again and you can see we have it here in our tilta cage which makes it great for um, being able to rig up things like this monitor and now this little mirrorless camera becomes much more powerful when you're able to use it in this sort of form factor we do have other power options for our a7s3 but typically for a shoot like tomorrow, we'll just run it off the internal battery and then the monitor will get its own NPF battery. This is our secondary tripod. We have a variety of tripods, but this is probably most commonly our second tripod because it has this sort of uh, ball head, um, which can easily be leveled out, which makes shooting on location much faster. And you spend a lot less time adjusting the legs of the tripod. So those cameras obviously don't just ride with us in the car, we pack them away. Um, most often we'll pack them into something like this, which is our doctor's bag from Tenba. I believe it's called the Cinelux 16. Um, and these are really cool and convenient because we can easily fit a variety of things in here without having to break everything down. Um, we've talked about it in previous videos, but we'll usually pack everything into lens wraps and allow all those to kind of like sit on top of each other in here and become more compact so it's, it's more easy to safely transport all of this stuff. And that would typically live on the cart down below. In here we also keep any extra media, extra filters, as well as extra batteries. So when filming interviews on location, typically the biggest concern is audio. And this is where we tend to bring a few extra items just in case. It's not things that we will always need or always use, but it's important to have backups and it's important to have um, a backup plan really. So our most commonly used wireless lavalier is the Sennheiser AVX system. Um, this we have our audio transmitter as well as our audio receiver. Um, these have been great because they're super compact and reliable. They have great signal and a great audio quality so we can quickly shift from a sit-down interview into filming b-roll if we need to keep someone mic'd up. It makes it super easy and convenient. And all of that comes in this little package. And if we're interviewing one person we'll typically run a lav and a boom just for safety. Again, um, sometimes the lav performs better. Most often we'll use the audio from the boom, but you never know if something happens with the boom or if the boom isn't placed properly, then um, we'll rely on something like a lavalier mic. So this is our other source of audio. Again, like I said, our, our main source is our Sennheiser MKH-416. Uh, tomorrow we will be filming inside, so we'll probably take this blimp off, but it is nice to keep it on there for transport just to make sure the microphone is safe. And this is our K-Tech Boom, which has an XLR cable built in, which makes it super easy to boom audio and not have to worry about the cable getting in the way. Um, this thing extends pretty far. I don't even know what the max range is. I've never had to use it. Typically, since we work in a smaller crew, it's most often two to three people. Tomorrow it's just gonna be Joel and I. So we'll probably bring our boom holder and just set the boom up. One of us will monitor audio, but not man the boom the whole time. And one thing I forgot to mention is the Rycote blimp. We always bring this just in case because we've so many times showed up on an interview and we thought it was gonna be inside and the client really wants to shoot outside and it's maybe not an ideal day. Um, we'll have this Rycote blimp on here, which will help to protect against wind, and this is even more protection, the wind jammer on top, this big fuzzy thing. But regardless, we pretty much always run the mic on this um, shock mount from Ryko, just in case it gets bumped or something. All right, so those are our devices on how we capture audio, and this is how we record audio if we're not going into the FX9. Ideally, we always bring this. Uh, it's the Zoom F6. It's a six channel audio recorder, and although the FX9 does have a really good audio capture built in. Uh, the ability to record in 32-bit float has been a lifesaver for us, especially, like I said, in a, working in a smaller crew, there's not always somebody to man audio. Sometimes it's more of a, just make sure it's in the zone and um, go do your other job from there. So this is, like I said, the Zoom F6. It lives in this bag from Orca. 
And we also have a coiled XLR cable that lives in there, just so you can easily connect it to the boom mic or plug in the lavalier. And you're able to monitor all of your different audio channels right up here on this little screen and you have all of these knobs to adjust gain. This audio recorder has been a lifesaver. There's been so many times where we're recording audio and something goes way out of reach or um, out of range and we're able to recover it with the 32-bit float option. Um, for interviews, we pretty much always use the 32-bit float just for safety. Um, and this bag's also been great because oftentimes when we're booming audio, we're in less ideal environments like weather, and this allows us to continue working without having to worry about our gear getting damaged. In this bag, there's room for some extras. We keep these overcovers by Rycoat. They're just these little sticky guys that make it much easier to attach a lavalier to a person without having to worry about getting any interference. And lastly, on the audio front, we always bring a pair of headphones, obviously. These are just a pair of Shure headphones we got with our Rodecaster. Moving on to the lighting, which is another super important part of filming an interview. We'll typically bring anywhere from three to five lights, depending on the shoot. So tomorrow, we're going to be bringing our two Forza 300s, uh, which are both daylight balanced lights. They're very powerful. We'll use one Forza 300 with our parabolic softbox, which is like, I think it's a 120 centimeter parabolic softbox. It's one of our largest softboxes we own and it has the easy up, which makes it really great for filming on location. It doesn't take a lot of time to set up or break down. And that will typically be our key light. So depending on the situation, we'll have one key light and then we'll reserve the other Forza 300 to use with either the stock reflector or the Fresnel, depending on the environment. And that will act as either our fill light or just more of a room ambient light to help fill in the rest of the room. But yeah, it depends on the environment. Sometimes it'll be outside a window pouring light in. Other times it'll be bouncing off of a wall in the room just providing fill if the location calls for it. Our third light that we almost always bring with us is our Forza 60B. And the reason why we love this light is because we have a little projector mount for it. And this allows us to create little patterns or other little areas of interest in the image via the projector mount. So this will pretty much always work as an accent light. Sometimes we'll use it as like a hair light, but most of the time you'll see it being shown into the image, onto the background or something of that sort. And if we are going to bring more lights than that, it will typically be our two foot tube lights, which we'll use as a hair light or an accent light. These are RGB, so we can set them to any color we want. So we most commonly will use them as just a hair light right behind the subject. But in the past, we have put them further into the scene to create little pops of color or pops of light throughout the image. We do have four other four foot tube lights as well as two little six inch tube lights, which all kind of serve the same purpose. They're great because they all run on battery. And we've even put the six inch light into the frame to act as like a, um, a practical light. So if there's any lights that are already visible in the frame, say on like a machine or something, we could pop in one of those little six inch tube lights to replace it and that way we can dial in the color temperature so it doesn't become a distraction. We even sometimes use them to replace a practical bulb like in a lampshade to be able to dial in the specific color temperature or whatever desired effect we're looking for. Another thing we really like about tube lights is that they're very small and easy to rig up. So that's why we'll most commonly use them as like a hair light or just fly them way up out of frame and they can do their job and be out of sight. They're also very easily modified. We have a bunch of different modifiers such as egg crates for them, but you can easily just put like a sheet in front of them and diffuse them and create a really nice soft light. Another really important part of a shoot is making sure that we have enough light stands. We have these light stands from Photoflex. We'll always bring two of them and those will just live either right on the cart or in the bag that I mentioned earlier. We like those because they're fairly lightweight and easily collapsed, but they are still very sturdy, surprisingly, for a light stand. So that way either our tube lights or our boom microphone can live on there. And then we almost always will bring at least one C stand for our key light. That allows us to manipulate it, whether it needs to be boomed out further or just higher up than a light stand will allow. We also have these two moving blankets which live on the cart. They're typically used to help isolate sound. So if there's a lot of ambient sound, we'll use it to block that out. 
but we also will sometimes uh, clamp them up to block out a window um, so the light's not spilling all over the scene or even just to add a little bit of negative fill. So another important thing that we always bring with us is this crate full of different types of grip equipment and electrical. Um, we'll have a variety of lengths of extension cords. These are, this is a 50 foot single and a 15 foot. So that way we can have just the right amount of cable that we need and we don't have to worry about where the outlets are and that won't dictate where we place our lights. Um, so you can see we have more extension cords. In here we also have a couple different lengths of SDI and XLR cables, just in case we need um, extra ones of those. We also have different types of clamps and knuckles. These are one of the most important things for us on set. We're constantly rigging things up onto C-stands, such as our boom microphone, but it could be even just something um, like an extra camera, an overhead camera, or even just diffusion. We also have a couple of these super clamps. These are great because they allow us to rig things up like lights and diffusion without having to sacrifice a light stand. And sometimes there are other elements in the environment that allow you to attach this on much easily, much more easy than it would be to bring a light stand over. We also have some of the infamous number twos, just some A clamps in case we have to pin up one of those moving blankets to block out a window or we've even used them to hang diffusion over windows. There's so many different uses for these, I'm, I'm sure you guys know. The last thing I see in here are these little tube clamps. These are for our tube lights. They allow us to mount our tube lights via quarter 20 to something like a knuckle or one of these super clamps. And that way we can clamp those lights virtually anywhere that a super clamp can go. So also on our cart here, you'll see we have a bunch of different types of paper tape and gaff tape. Again, you can't really go on a shoot without any of this. And then we also have some bongo ties, our favorite, as well as a bunch of different safety cables in case we are rigging up lights and we wanna make sure they don't fall on anyone. So that is typically everything we would bring with us on an interview shoot. Again, they largely vary depending on how many people we're gonna be interviewing and especially by the location. So thanks for checking out this video. Uh, if you think we missed anything or if you have anything in specific that you like to bring on interview shoots, please let us know down in the comments and give this video a like if you want to see more videos like it. We've been trying to post on a more regular basis for you guys, so please also subscribe to our channel if you find this stuff interesting. We're going to be making a lot more videos about video production and running a video production company. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.